If you've been watching a while, you've seen me get creative with getting decent full-profile GPUs to run on older office PCs. But what if we went beyond budget GPUs into super budget possible e-waste, is there even any reason to try it cards? Like the $30 GPU we're about to install. Chair desk. GPU. Wow! This is the AMD R7 450. It's pretty commonly available used on eBay for around $30. Now, a fair amount of that price is likely because it's low profile. For example, the full profile Quadro K2200 is usually available for close to the same price. And while it's hard to find testing and comparisons for something this old and kind of obscure, I imagine the Quadro is a significantly better card. But we'll get an idea of what this can do. I'm going to be running this in the HP Z240, which it's worth mentioning that the computer is also very cheap, but not bad by any means. Over the years, I've bought a few of these, and they're frequently in the range of $40 to $100, depending depending on the specs. And once again, depending on the specs, can actually be surprisingly powerful. Especially when we can get them running decent GPUs like in the past. Though this time, decent might not be the right word. Though you never know, so we'll have to see. I bet it could emulate some PS1s! I told you to shut up! I apologize for him. I let him out of his cage for like two minutes and this is what happened. Happens. After physically installing the card with one swift but effective pool noodle strike, I tried to find and download the drivers. And to be honest, that may or may not have been successful. I had a tremendous amount of difficulty finding drivers for this card specifically. Even after checking the websites from AMD, Radeon, and Dell, which from what I was reading, Dell may have had some something to do with the production of this card. I think it might have come like as part of an OEM device or something. Again, it's really hard to find information on this thing, so I don't even know at this point. I don't know what's real anymore! Anyway, I found drivers on AMD's website that seem to be for this model, but it's weird, so I don't know if it's gonna cause us any difficulties or not. This is why we always keep the pull noodle on the ready. We're going to test out some gaming, but I'm not going to start too high because my expectations for the card aren't very high. But I do want to see if we can go beyond 2D right off the bat. So we're hitting up some Fallout 4. You'll notice I'm recording the screen directly because trying to run capture software at the same time as the game nearly destroyed my computer, which... $30 GPU. After rebooting, the gameplay itself wasn't horrendous, but yeah. Side note, from what I've played of this game, it is awesome, but I have to say, Fallout 4 is an RPG hoarder's worst nightmare. Should I pick up the charred piece of paper? Yes. The old magazine? Yes. Pencil? Yes. The $30 GPU? D it. Yes. An hour later, I have so much stuff I literally can't walk. But I realize I'm really on a tangent here, so back to the game. It is playable, but that's about all I can say for it. 1080p, lowest in-game graphical settings, and it's doing an average of about 35 FPS. I don't know if it's even worth trying a game that's a little bit newer, but We'll see how it goes. We're here to do a job. Let's do it. Pull Noodle Overdrive mode, baby. Devil May Cry 5. This is a 2019 game, and I don't even know why I tried. 20 FPS at 1080p, and the gameplay seems to be slowed. That being said, when I reduce the resolution to 720p, the frame rate jumps to about 40 to 40 
35 FPS and the gameplay is pretty smooth. So it does perform at lower resolution, but pretty meh overall. I know you're probably just watching this for the entertainment, but in terms of actual consideration, I would not pay $30 for this GPU. The only reason I even have it is because there was another random deal I got on an office PC and that GPU was inside it. In terms of buying a card, you'd be much better off just to wait and save for something better. I really don't even think it would be great for an emulation PC. And this is a bit off topic, but from my experience, there is a really sharp and drastic leap in emulation. And that jump is between the PS2 and the PS3, or at least those generations of consoles. The PS2 takes almost nothing to run. I've done a ton of different PS2 games on the integrated graphics of the i3-6100, but then there's a drastic jump up to PS3. Again, from my experience, you need solid integrated graphics for that system, and I don't foresee this card being able to cross that barrier. But I I'm on a tangent again, so thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you later.